Hey everybody, Mike here, and today is perhaps the best day of my young life. Because look at what I've got here. This is perhaps the craziest thing that anybody's ever sent me for review. This is a Hypershell Pro X exoskeleton. It is a battery powered exoskeleton. It hooks to your waist, it hooks to your legs, and it provides you with additional mechanical advantage when you're hiking. Uh, this is a crazy piece of equipment, and I gotta say, I'm really biased towards this kind of thing, because ever since I was a kid, any media that I really enjoyed featured some sort of performance-boosting exoskeleton or power armor or something like that. So, um, already, I think this is just a really cool piece of equipment, but I'm gonna be taking an honest look at it today. I'm gonna wear it in a bunch of different scenarios. I'm gonna tell you how it works. I'm gonna tell you if it works. I'm gonna tell you who it's for, and I'm gonna give you my honest thoughts at the end. So let's jump into our review of the Hypershell Pro X Exoskeleton. For this video, we're gonna start at square one, which is taking them out of the box, though I got too excited and couldn't wait to turn the cameras on. So here's the empty box. You'd think that you got this thing from the Apple Store. The packaging is very fancy, and it comes with this lightweight case that you can store it in. 10 out of 10 packaging, very nice, but who cares about the box other than my cat? I want my robot legs. Unfortunately, you can't take your first steps into the future without first downloading an app, which is my first gripe. My phone is bad, and my Bluetooth doesn't like to work, and also, I just hate having to download apps for everything. Why does everything have to be an app? It frustrates me to no end that every, every single thing has to have an app. So after entering in some basic information and giving permission to a corporation thousands of miles away to know my precise location, I was ready to rock. I fitted the exoskeleton to my body and it actually felt pretty good. The construction is nice and it's more comfortable than you'd think. This thing feels very high end, which it should because it costs a lot of money. There we go. Hear that? So there's a few different settings and modes here. Um, obviously, I'm gonna switch to the one called turbo mode because if they didn't want me to use that, they wouldn't have called it turbo mode now, would they? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so first big test. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to give my legs just enough mental stimuli to get them barely shuffling in hopes that the servos will pick up the movement and kind of just move my legs for me. <laughs> I feel like a marionette. Somebody else is controlling my legs. I had a lot of fun stomping around my house and decided that just wearing the thing for a long period of time while I went about my day would be a good first test to see if it's comfortable, if it works, and if I can get used to it. I was taking a look at the holes bored in the deck and I, I don't think they're termites, I think they're carpenter bees. <laughs> Okay, so, oh, that feels weird. Uh, so I've worn these things around for the past little while now, and I took them off, and it was kind of, uh, it felt how I hoped. It's like if you were swimming in the ocean with flippers, and then you took them off, and you struggled through the water trying to swim like you were before. It's like there's a big mechanical advantage that you're now missing. It's almost like, before, all I did was this, and then my legs up in the air. And now I've actually got to do all the work that stinks. <laughs> it's a little rainy, so I guess we're going to find out if these things are waterproof or not. Uh, something I have noticed that's a bit of a bummer um, is that these legs, they don't just, <laughs> they're trying to walk for me. <laughs> they don't just uh, automatically work when you put any kind of motion into them, you sort of have to rev them up. You got to get them going by taking that first step 
under your own power and then the servos kick in. So they don't just kind of work straight off rip. You have to take that first step. And I think that kind of a missed opportunity for somebody that wants a pair of robotic super legs because if they did work with that first step, you know, if they detected that I was trying to move and those servos automatically kicked in, then that would allow me to do a lot more really cool dynamic stuff. For example, for this video, I was planning on taking you all to my gym and I was gonna load up the squat bar. We were gonna do this whole super fun thing where I was gonna try to squat with a bunch of weight on the bar and see if these things like actually helped me um, get the weight up, but I can't do that because to get them to start working, you've gotta be walking, which I get it. Um, I do get it. They're marketed as hiking exoskeleton legs. Uh, that's what they're meant to do. That's what they're made to do. It would be cool. Okay, so since squats are out, let's try another form of activity. Let's try running. Do these things actually help you when you run? My guess is they're not gonna help very much because the force output when you're running is gonna be much greater than if you're just walking. But let's find out. Okay, so I can definitely feel the servos catching. I can definitely feel it moving my legs around, but it's like much, much less. And I think that's just because you're exerting more force when you run. So you're just not gonna see as big of a difference when you run. This is me just barely lifting my knees. Like just barely. Huh. That's a little more than I would have thought. What happens if I break into a dead sprint? Didn't feel it as much there. I feel like the more force you're putting out, the less you're gonna feel from the legs because the amount that it would have to help you for something as crazy as, you know, sprinting versus just walking. Like right now I can feel it. Whereas, sprinting, I just don't feel it that much. There we go. I wonder if this thing is gonna walk me off a bridge. <laughs> okay, so. That is the maddest goose I've ever heard in my life. Okay, so you got a few different modes with this. You've got standard mode, I think that's what it's called. It offers you four different power levels that are going to give you pretty good bang for your buck as far as assistance effort that it puts out versus battery life. Then you've got standby mode, which is just one button press away. And what that does is it essentially goes into power saving mode. So if you only need the legs occasionally, this is a really good thing to have on hand because you can just kind of turn it off. Um, or at least put it on standby while it's still on and then save yourself some battery. And then you've got turbo mode. There we go. <laughs> and turbo mode goes crazy. Turbo mode, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. You can tell it's, it's trying to walk for me. Um, it's very, very powerful. Uh, this eats up battery. Uh, don't expect your battery to last long in turbo mode. I figure what we're gonna do today is we're just gonna go on a regular hike. And I can tell you, I can tell you whether it works or not. <laughs> I'll see you out there. Woo! Fair warning, if you take these things outside, people will ask questions. What is that? These are uh, robot legs. I know, it's insane. A company sent me to them, they want me to review them. So they so like- You're like a YouTuber or something like that? I don't like to use that word. So I feel like the first and second settings in the standard mode don't really do all that much. 
Once you get up into three and four or up into turbo mode, that's when it really starts working. You can feel it kind of taking a load off. So this thing does a really good job with predicting your cadence. The servos don't just respond to your movement. They, they kind of predict where it is your legs are gonna go next. So when you take a big step with your right foot, you can feel the servos in the left leg kind of start to engage and pull your leg up. So it's doing a little bit of the walking for you um, predictively. And you might think that would be an issue because what happens if you're walking really quickly and then you slow down? No real issue there. It kind of knows what to do. It does a very good job of uh, speeding up and slowing down. It's not like locking you into one particular speed whenever you start walking. Even like some running, you can still feel it kicking in. So we'll go from a nice run to a nice slow walk. Pretty seamless. So after getting the chance to play around with these things for a little bit, I can see that the biggest mechanical advantage people are gonna get out of these things, the biggest noticeable difference that they're gonna make is definitely on the uphills. Whenever you're walking on flat ground, you can feel them working. They're doing something and they're very stable, um, but you don't really feel the advantage to its fullest extent until you get on the uphills, whether that's a short, steep incline or whether that's like a long, gradual slope you really feel the servos working. You really feel them taking the load off your weight, off your effort, off your output. And when you take that step and you bring your leg up, not only do the motors help lift your leg up, but they also help drive you up after you've planted your foot. So it's very easy for someone who might have difficulty climbing up hills to get into a nice cadence when they're climbing. Pretty cool. Okay, so I've been playing around with these things for a couple days now. I've been wearing them in my house. I've been running around doing chores in them. I'm taking them out on hikes. And I feel like at this point, I've experienced pretty much everything that these legs are gonna give me. So it's time for a final conclusion as to whether or not these things are actually worth it. And I'm gonna give you a frustrating answer because I don't know. Are they worth it for me? I don't think so. Um, they're really nice. They're super cool. I mean, I'm really, I'm glad that I have them, but I don't really need assistance when I'm out on the trail. I like to hike under my own power and I can hike under my own power. I'm lucky that I haven't had any big knee or back injuries, at least not permanent ones, that have kept me away from being out here and seeing all this, but maybe if you're somebody who has had a little bit of wear and tear and you need something that's gonna help you get out there to experience all this, then maybe something like this could be incredible for you. I don't know, you'll just kinda have to decide for yourself. They won't turn you into the Terminator. You're not gonna be RoboCop. You're not gonna be back flipping off walls or doing all sorts of Spider-Man stuff when you're wearing these things. It would be cool if you could, but really, these things, they're made for walking, and they do a really good job at that. They do take a good bit of the fatigue out of movement. And I can tell you right now, when I take these things off, I'm probably gonna feel kind of weird because I've been wearing them around so much. Yeah, I'm so used to having the assistance that it feels kind of strange to, uh, to walk around without them. These are really cool. They're built very well and they do everything that they say they do on the box. Uh, battery life seems to be pretty good. Um, the servos are quiet. The hip belt is comfortable. It looks well made, it feels well made. It's a really cool device. It's awesome to see something like this hitting the market. A bit odd that it's limited mainly to hiking right now because I could see this being useful for a lot of other applications. 
So if you're somebody who might need a little bit of assistance getting out there and, and doing all this, or maybe, I don't know, you're just some kind of transhumanist and you love this sort of thing, go crazy. Um, I think it's really cool. It's a really cool device. Uh, until next time, I'm Mike with Backpacking TV, and I'll catch you all later.